Good morning to one and all. Today's lecture topic is retainers and connectors. All right, so coming to the learning outcomes, so you should be able to define retainer, connector, classify types of retainer, connectors, and discuss the criteria for selection of retainer, connectors, and its applications. Okay, by the lecture. So coming first to the retainer. A uh, definition of a retainer is a part of fixed dental processes that unites the apartments to the reminder to the remainder of the restoration. Okay, so that is according to the GPD, the glossary of prostodontic terms. Okay, in the photo you can see you call it a bridge as a whole, right? This is a retainer. In the middle is a connector. This is a pontic and these are the abutments, okay? So these are the four structures which you are already aware of, okay? Yeah. So now we'll be uh, re reading about the retainers. Okay, so the requirements uh, has to be, it should be able to withstand the masturbatory forces. It should be able to restore anatomy of the tooth. There has to be some pulp consideration given if indicated. Okay, so pulp has to be taken care of. Uh, aesthetics has to be taken care of, okay? And hygiene uh, is important, which has to be maintained. Coming to the classification, retainers can be classified into extracoronal retainer, intracoronal retainer, and radicular retainer, okay? Coming to the extra coronal retainer, so as a definition that is a part of the fixed dental processes, uniting the abutment to the other elements of the processes that surrounds all or part of the prepared crown, okay? So it surrounds all or a part of a prepared crown. It's classified as a full veneer crown, partial veneer crown, resin bonded retainers okay so full veneer crowns means guys these are pfm all metal and all ceramic crowns so partial veneers will be anterior three-fourth posterior three-fourth and seven-eighth crown okay and examples of these can be loop and connect okay so yeah we'll just be seeing these okay coming to full veneer crowns are restoration that covers all of the coronal teeth surfaces that is mesial, distal, facial, lingual, and occlusal, okay? So that is basically a crown, okay? Which is classified as full metal crown, metal ceramic crown, or all ceramic crowns. So, uh, in interior uh, three-fourth crown, it will not be covering the, you know, facial surface of the crown, okay, of an interior teeth or, or of a posterior teeth, and you'll have a winged preparation all over, okay, from mesial to distal, okay, and also occlusion. Same for here will be a posterior three-fourth crown, seven-eighth crown will basically cover uh, all but the mesial buccal cusp of an interior, of, of, of an upper that is maxillary molar teeth, okay? So it will be covering everything except mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary molar tooth, okay? So that is known as the 78th crown, okay? Coming to the resin bonded retainer, so as a definition, it is a fixed dental processes that is six, that is fixed to Tooth structure, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, guys, there's an error here. Okay, uh, it is fixed to tooth structures, prim primarily the enamel, which has been edged, okay, etched to provide mechanical retention for the resin cement, okay? So to overcome the tooth reduction required for placement of the retainer, okay? So it, it has been... Um, primarily etched, okay, for mechanical retention. So you can see if you want to replace one teeth, you can uh, prepare a retainer and etch that surface and prepare that teeth a little bit and put the 
give a resin bonded uh, retainer, okay? So it is classified as Rochette's Bridge, Maryland Bridge, and Virginia Bridge, okay? So we have covered in the resin bonded restorations, guys, okay? Okay, coming to the Rochette's Bridge, bridge uh, it's a resin bonded fixed dental prosthesis incorporating holes within the metal, metal framework and loops to the lingual aspect of teeth adjacent to an edentula space that replaces one or more teeth. Okay. Uh, so it will replace one or more teeth. Okay. Maryland Bridge use, use of acid etching of the metal plate. Okay. Eliminated the need for perforation. Okay. So here you can see there are perforations. Here uh, you just use a metal plate and uh, it can be cemented. Okay. It can be acid etched and then uh, cement can be placed and it can be uh, used as a Maryland bridge. Okay, coming to the intracoronal retainers. Okay, intracoronal retainers within the normal contours of the clinical crown of a tooth are classified as inlay. Okay, the MOD inlay is the most commonly used inlay and onlay. Okay, so basically, inlay is nothing but a fixed intracoronal restoration or a dental restoration made outside of the tooth to correspond to the form of a prepared cavity, okay? Which is then looted into the tooth, okay? So imagine you made a cavity preparation and you kind of took out that piece and you have fabricated outside in the lab and put it back inside, okay? All right? And coming to an onlay, so onlay is a restoration that restores one or more cusp and adjoining occlusal surfaces or the entire occlusal surface that is retained by mechanical or adhesive means, okay? So onlay will most probably be covering the cusp and one part of maybe like the mesiobuccal cusp and the rest of the tooth structure, okay? Right? Okay, coming to the radicular retainers. So this radicular means pertaining to the root of the tooth. That's what it means. So it consists of a post or core that obtains it, its retention and resistance to displacement from prepare, prepared root portion of an endodontically treated tooth. These can be custom made or prefabricated depending on post length, shape, diameter, or surface configuration. Okay, it is classified as post, post and core, pin ledge, or combination of the above. Okay, so these are more or less a radicular retainer which are used. Okay, and then you build a core on top and then you do a tooth preparation, you, you put a crown on top, okay? So that portion which goes in the root is known as a radicular retainer, which comes in a form of course, post and core, okay? All right, coming to connectors. So as a definition, according to the GPD again, the portion of the fixed dental process that unites the retainers in the pontic. So remember the first photo we used. So it basically joins the pontic and the retainers together, okay? So the middle component is known as a connector. Classified as rigid connectors and non-rigid connectors, okay? So rigid connectors definition is a cast, soldered, or fused union between the retainer and the pontic, okay? It can be a cast, a soldered, or fused union, anything, okay? So the types are cast connectors, soldered connectors, and loop connectors. Okay, so coming to cast connectors, a cast metal union between the retainer and pontic 
in a fixed dental prosthesis okay so that is known as that is according to the gpt all right a cast metal union between retainer and pontic okay guys so that is a cast connector a solder connector involves use of an intermediate metal alloy okay which is soldered those melt temperatures lower than that of a parent metal okay so it is basically soldered in between okay metal alloys are used coming to the third tip is a loop connector which is used when an existing diastema is to be maintained in an FPD consists of a loop on the lingual aspect so that is a loop this is a photo of a loop connector that connects connects the adjacent retainer of the pontic okay so it's in a form of a loop okay so that type of connector okay so coming to the last few slides uh now we're talking about non-rigid connector that is the second type of connector as a definition according to gpt it is any connector that permits limited movement between otherwise independent members of a fixed dental prosthesis. Uh, yeah. And these connectors allow movement between the pontic and retainers. Um, yeah. So there is movement involved, guys, okay? So that is why it's non-rigid. It can be removed and attached. One component is in, you can see that two components are in different parts of the FPD. Non-rigid connectors are indicated when it is not possible to prepare two abutments for an FPD with a common path of placement, okay? So you will see examples of that in the types so coming to the type so it there is tenon mortis connector or dovetail uh, split pontic connector cross pin and wing connector tenon mortis connector or dovetail so in tenon the male component is attached to the pontic this is how the tenon looks like Mortis is the female component. It is prepared within the contours of a retainer, okay? Incorporated during the wax pattern stage. All right? Okay, so this is how it looks like. This is the non-rigid connector, guys. So you can see that uh, we have prepared one, two, three, four, five. So we want a five unit bridge, okay? We have prepared three teeth. Uh, sometimes it's not possible to have a same path of insertion and to correct the uh, path of insertion or to have a straight line axis. So you make a one, two, three, four unit in this example and uh, in this uh, mandibular ridge. So you make uh, like a four, three, two like a four six right um or four 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 five four six four seven okay four unit bridge and you have a path of insertion which is straight this is straight line of axis this has a tilted axis there is it's not possible to make a one bridge which has the same path of insertion so you can have a 10 on uh, attached in one component and a mortise attached in the other component. Same here. Mortise here and tenon is here, okay? <clears throat> so it gets attached and you can just cement it together, guys, okay? All right. Coming to split pontic connectors are used with fire abutments. A uh, connector incorporated within the pontic okay uh yeah and uh, uh pontic split into mesial and distal segment each attached to their respective retainers okay all right so 
uh, here you can see this is the mesial component like we have seen this photo in the previous slide okay so the mesial segment within the key is cemented first so this will be cemented first okay one two three four five unit okay in the maxillary arch mesial segment will be attached first okay and then you can see that the, here there will be a split connector which is present and it will be keyed inside and then the distal cemented will be attached and then cemented simultaneously after doing the mesial cementation. Okay, all right. So yeah, this is how it will look like basically, guys. Okay, so the mesial segment which is cemented first has a... Uh, uh, portion of the split um, connector okay all right and the distal portion will have another segment which will just fix inside okay and after the cementation this is how it's gonna look like all right so this is a split connector okay coming to the last type of connector which is the cross pin and wing connector so basically these are the shapes of uh, the connector, the names are kind, kind of denoting the shapes of the connectors. So a wing is attached to the distal retainer and retainer ring component. Okay, here. Pontic is attached to the mesial retainer and designed to fit the wing retainer pontic component. Okay, so this, this is the wing. Okay, it will attach to one of the components and it will fix. A pin hole is drilled and the pin is seated after cementing the component. All right. So after you do the cementation, you have to drill a pin hole is drilled and then the pin is seated after the cementation of the component. So again, uh, it will anyway be cemented properly, guys. Okay. So to have a better attachment, that's why you drill a hole and you make the attachment sit together. All right. So the distal, the mesial, both seat together. So first they make a hole, they seat together uh, and uh, put the cement and you just fix it together and that's how it looks like. Right. Okay, guys, thank you so much for patient listening. Kindly refer to the standard textbooks, which remain Rosensteel and Schillenberg for FPD. And uh, for any further questions, uh, we are available on Poly in Polyclinic 3, Prosto Department. So please read and come and ask questions if you have any. Thank you.